Welcome to 3.2%. This is our fake Thanksgiving with my fake family and fake food on a fake date. Enjoy the episode, everybody. Distilled, milled, and chilled, it's 3.2%. With your hosts, Adam Sherlock, Natalie Banks, Johnny Ritchie, Patrick Bogdanich, Susie Hershey, DJ Sayo, Alex Boye, Mark Hoffley, Yosua JT, and Porter Rockwell, his sidekick, the mad scientist. Welcome to the show. Everybody can start eating. Get some food. Everybody. Start piling it on. <laughs> this isn't real meat. This is tofurkey. Tofu, tofurkey. Right so we're, we're, that's why it's a fake Thanksgiving. It's because it isn't Thanksgiving yet for us when we're filming this, obviously. It's a vegetarian Thanksgiving. And because the turkey's fake. <laughs> that's, that's Tim. He's one of our guests. And our other guest is right Quinn. here. This is Quinn. Quinn's a musician from Murray. He's here to provide background music for us tonight. <laughs> What's this next segment, by the Okay, way? it's interesting that you should ask me that, Natalie. Actually, what would Thanksgiving be without football? Nothing. All right, no. Pointless. Okay, but this isn't really. This isn't really like uh, football. Football. It's it's indoor football, and we filmed it like eight months ago. It's Utah Over. Warriors indoor football. Filmed a couple months ago, and we figured what would Thanksgiving be without football? Yep. Excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. That sucks. Thank you. And while I'm going to the bathroom, you can check out Utah Warriors. Hockey. Hockey players. That might be what you think of when you think of the East Center, but not tonight. Not tonight, my friends. Tonight, it's indoor football. The Utah Warriors. Ah, baby! Woo! The nation! It's the nation! Woo! Why do you come to a Warriors game as opposed to like an outdoor football game? The indoor game is just fast, it's hard hitting. These are my, a couple of my new friends at the Warriors game. This is, uh, what's your name? Ryan, go Warriors! Yeah, right on, and yours? Rob, go Warriors! All right, now uh, you guys do like a special cheer. You were just telling me about it. Why don't you, uh, could you show it to me once? Here comes Bacon! Here comes Bacon! Okay, Joe, I hear you do a special cheer. I gotta see this one. Yeah, here it goes, ready? Here comes Bacon! All right, here we are at the Warriors games, and uh, now these games are pretty fun and everything, but you might need a little alcohol enhancement, so that's why we have our man Billy here. Billy, uh, what do you do here? Well, I serve a beer and a few pretzels, you know, to keep the fans going. Good, Billy, we need people like you around. Uh, what's the uh, alcohol percentage in the beer? In Utah, 3.2. Sweet. Well, uh, that's perfect because I'm on a show called 3.2 and uh, we'll take one. This is Breakfast of Champions, this beer here. It's made with wheat and years ago there was Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy on the Wheaties package. This is just Wheaties in a fermented state. It's easier to get down and good for you. A lot better than pop, I'll promise you that. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell my mother that next time she sees me hungover. Uh, Josh, could I, could I have some money? man please <laughs> a two dollar bill look at this what are you gonna say? yummy yummy <laughs> <laughs> i just got harassed by a drive-by mullet did you guys see that she almost threw ice cream at me man okay everybody get in here all right First down. First down. Thanks, Billy. I'll pay for the beer. Oh, 
I've never been on TV before. See, and I'm showing off a little bit here. <laughs> this is my wife, Shirley. Oh, the hell with this. Let's get both of you. <laughs> you guys are the, one of the cutest couples I've seen in a long time. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad somebody thinks so. I don't think he does. <laughs> this woman, she'd be much happier because I brought her more happiness than Brigham did for 55. I'm telling you that. <laughs> Man, do during halftime at a Warriors game. What's up? This is Joel with 3.2%. We're at the uh, halftime smoke break with these ladies. Yeah, are you uh, dating the players? Of course. Yeah. What's What's the main thing you like? Uh, you like the tight pants the players wear? Mm -hmm. Oh, those pads make you feel like they have muscles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could use me a football player. <laughs> Kobe, uh, good game today. What happened to your chin, man? Well, I got blindsided. Didn't see it coming. Looks like you have quite a following, and uh, I've been going around asking a lot of fans uh, what what they do at the game and everything like that. And some uh, people taught me a cheer that they do especially for you. They're like, "Here comes bacon." Here comes bacon. How's that feel that people are uh, creating cheers about you, man? Man, it feels so good, man. I'm totally flattered. This game, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide, and we will find you, big dog. We will, fi we will find you. <laughs> if you want to go see a game once the season starts, uh www.utahwarriors.com. Uh, yeah. Yes, utahwarriors.com. There you go. Um, we're going to go to a commercial, so that should be fun. <laughs> To, like, I hate to bring up something that is a controversial at this point after we've had such a lovely uh, vegetarian Thanksgiving, but there is an um, uh, issue that I'd like to bring up at this point. It's, uh, it, I represent uh, VERL, which is uh, Vegetables Impact Reduction Legislation, which is uh, all about stopping the harsh cruelty to vegetables, flowers, and other uh, plants that can't defend themselves. I, I'll show you some pictures of the horror taking place. Look at that right there on the cutting floor, cutting the vegetables right in front of their families. It's a potato. I mean, it's, it's it comes from the ground. It's not like it doesn't have feelings. How do you know? That? When's the last time you talked to a Trust potato? Me. Right. Am I the only one that is like really disturbed by this? Because um, it's I can't even imagine that somebody would do that, especially in front of the parents. Wait, wait, wait. It's all potatoes. Hold on, hold on a minute. And then, shut off the camera. Hey, the did, you, did you make this on your and computer at home? No, no, no. Knives these knives. There? These. Let me get this straight. You want people to stop cutting their vegetables at home? Well, what about turkeys? What about putting the turkeys in the turkey fry? Oh my God! Oh my God! It's atrocious. I get that for turkeys, but oh no one's going to touch them. If they want to leave, they can leave. It's not like they're behind bars, clanking little turkey cups against the bars. <laughs> See, they don't care. They're running around there having a good time until it's time to die. And then we eat it. And I'm thankful for that. Look at them. They put him in the, the turkey processor. They throw him in there. It, it de uh, claws them. It de feathers them. And Are you high? We just told you. It's made out of tofu. No. No. Th no. This. If you could help us at all in our cause, because we really need money and the future. Well, I don't know what the hell your intervention is supposed to be, but it doesn't make any sense. Look, like in, in order for Burl to get funding, I've got to prove that there is torture going on right in your own backyard. Look at that. Torturing and killing them in front of their families. Two percent is brought to you in part by Blindside Company, 2121 South Highland Drive. Love Sack, oversized sacks for oversized living. Salt Lake City Weekly, an X Mission, an X96, local independent and alternative.
3.2%. We are at our Thanksgiving <laughs> This is, uh, the next segment is Patrick's Journal. He's going out and doing some crazy stuff, so check it out. November 11th. I've been so low on cash and everything else. I had to sell my Bronco on eBay. Is that guy with the camera still standing right there? Which makes it open to every vulture in the free world, and I had to let it go to some wacko from Waco, Texas. Good morning, uh, you're here with the Patrick's Journal crew. We just picked up Patrick, we're going hunting. Another day in the life of when it rains, it pours, and when it pours, it pours on me. So I talked to my friend Johnny, and he's always trying to cheer me up or go hunting. We're going actually turkey hunting, I think, or we're at least going out to check out the species in order to determine if it's the kind of thing that Patrick could hunt and not be too upset about it. He needs a little venting tool, um, and the tool, according to his friend John, is going to be hunting. So somehow I end up in a road trip to Moroni, which I thought was in Temple Square. Apparently it's 160 miles south of there. We are entering uh, Juab County, where uh, by law you have to remove the N and the T from the word hunting. We're going hunting. We ended up uh, just south of Moroni for some reason. A place called Ephraim, uh, which uh, is rumored to be the uh, turkey farming capital of the country. This is Matt. Matt is uh, the son portion of a father-son operation here called White Acres. It's a turkey farm. How many turkeys do you raise a year? Uh, 220,000. 220,000 turkeys a year. What constitutes free range when you see that printed on a package? What does that mean? It's that they have the access to the outdoors. They can walk, they can exercise, they can take in the sun. We take a lot of pride in the ability that we can come out here every day and look at a good, healthy turkey. I mean, that's my job 24 7 is make sure that they're happy, they're growing. Uh, you know, maybe that sounds too idealistic, but it's the part of the business I like. All right. Is it true that turkeys can drown in a rainstorm? No. No? You know, there's a little bit of a safety aspect. You don't want to shoot the other hunters, so that's why we got Patrick dressed up in the orange. <laughs> I ain't getting shot by nobody. That's right. They eat a, uh, a pretty important mix. We have nutritionists on staff that are constantly testing, adjusting rations so that the turkeys can get the, the benefit of the total nutrition package. We're not only just concerned about the growth and the weight gain, but we're also concerned about their health. And all you got between you and your game is this thin wire fence. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be able to be seen against the backdrop. That's why I got the camera fly. <laughs> oh, we're like birds of a feather. <laughs> So if we, uh, if we had any viewers, um, I imagine that the demographic would be a younger, you know, a, a secular left, uh, people who would be concerned about things that they're eating. Um, if not uh, vegetarians, then reformed vegetarians, people who still maintain some sort of a, uh, um, or sellouts, whatever. It depends on, <laughs> depends on well, what. Well, they thought that was funny. Yeah. And when you see that. Seriously, seriously, I'll be here all week. <laughs> Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, there's pictures, everybody's seen them, of turkey farms where the turkeys are atrophied and in, in close quarters and, and just the conditions just aren't as nice as what we're seeing here. Uh, how does your farm compare to other farms where the conditions are not as good? The only thing that I can really compare it to is uh, maybe uh, growing the turkeys confined in a building. Uh, that seems to be the trend of, uh, of corporate uh, turkeys. I can't bring myself to really want to do that. I, I just. I enjoy being able to come out and see these uh, animals, enjoy the outside, enjoy the sun, uh, be able to go out and, and take dirt baths when they want and, and fluff off and, and stay clean. And, you know, I, I probably would just rather drive a truck or do some other job than, than grow turkeys in a confined atmosphere. I, I just, it just doesn't fit me. I, I couldn't do it and feel good. I think, uh, as you all know, the turkey is the most cunning of all the Thanksgiving animals. At least it says so in the Bible. 
but I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Learn. I have a call that I can do. Matt, <laughs> you know, really disappointed in your performance back there. Couldn't do it. Couldn't close the deal. I'm traumatized. I'm hungry. I'm. Uh, you know, you'd be full if you would have got a turkey. Uh, let's just go buy a turkey. All right, let's go buy a turkey. All right. So in the end, life always comes full circle. Because we ended up buying a turkey. And I can only hope that it came from a farm so pristine as the White Acres. And you know, I wonder, as I end this day, if I ever knew when I started this day, if that freaking turkey from Waco, Texas, knew that I would learn true meaning of thanksgiving. It's not a secret, it's open, it's standing right in front of you, but this side shoots our shoot. Patrick, you're the reason they invented drugs. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I have no clue. Seriously. Anyway, I love that guy. Alright, well, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back while you're uh, watching commercials, log on to 3.2percent.com. Find all sorts of interesting things. It's the setter home. The best part is I can only kind of hear her. I can only hear like a little bits and pieces, and then I have the soothing music by Quinn back here. Thank God. Behind it. Quinn, so we can't hear damping. I'm saying when Adam was a little kid, you should have brought this. We'll be right back. 3.2% is brought to you in part by Blindside Company, 2121 South Highland Drive. Love sack, oversized sacks for oversized living. Salt Lake City Weekly, an X Mission, an X96, local independent and alternative. This is Patrick Bogdanovich with 3.2%. We're here at Todd's Bar and Grill, uh, featured next Sunday. It's featured Todd's Bar and Grill here in Salt Lake City. It's on 3rd West and in between 9th and 13th South. You'll find it if you need to find it. This is the creme de la creme. We're at the bar at midnight and we're gonna go get people's best turkey calls. It's gonna be the best thing ever. Come on, let's go. Gobble. Gobbles! Gobble, gobble, gobble. I can do a chicken, I can't do a fish. It's not gonna make the cut. I don't care. What's a turkey? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble,
ever since. In that spirit, we at 3.2% decided to travel to the Skull Valley Goshute Indian Reservation to witness the latest demonstration of gratitude to our cherished Indian friends. Join me, won't you, in the spirit of thanks and brotherhood. Hi, I'm Mark Hoffling, reporting for 3.2. July 24th, 1847, these road-weary travelers arrived in this land, declaring that it would be the place they would start their new society. Unfortunately, they failed to notify the previous tenants. July 24th, 2004, and to here, Skull Valley, a mere 50 miles from where I was previously standing. Here, the last vestiges of the previous occupants hold out on their reservation, the Goshute Indians. The Goshutes wanted a range that went all the way from Colorado to Nevada. Now, of course, they're hemmed in on this tiny little reservation, surrounded by neighbors who give the gifts that just keep on giving. To the north, Magcorp, the nation's number one polluter. They extract magnesium from the Great Salt Lake and release chlorine gas, which drifts down this valley with the prevailing winds. Wow! bleach you can breathe. To the east, a stockpile Saddam Hussein could only dream of, the world's largest single above-ground stockpile of chemical weapons, and the incinerator that constantly leaks as they try to destroy it. Good God, it even looks poisonous. To the west is the ironically named EnviroCare, which is competing with the ghost shoots for high-level nuclear waste. Those syringes could be cleaned and reused. And finally, to the south is the Dugway Proving Grounds, where bombers and fighter jets laden with explosives fly over the Goshu Reservation every day to dump their ordnance and to test chemical and biological weapons. On the other side of these mountains here is the uh, Hill Air Force bombing range. Mm -hmm. They sometimes they get to be about a hundred feet above the trailer. No, what kind of planes are those? Uh, F-16s, uh, B-1 bombers, um, um, Apache helicopters. With full military ordnance. Exactly. Yeah. I'm here with Sammy Black Bear, who is the vice chairman of the Skull Valley Band of the Ghost Shoots. <laughs> the type of things that we live with. Yeah. Uh, there are times when uh, the nerve gas, uh, when they have an accident over here or whatever, you know, uh, all of a sudden you'll just start throwing up, you'll get sick. You know, it's, it's just mind-boggling because for them to even get their licenses, they have to consult uh, their neighboring communities. Nobody consulted Skull Valley. And nobody consulted any member of the tribe when they put the world's largest stockpile of weapons of mass destruction no. just up that direction. No. Just a few minutes from here. Uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it is a hard way of life to live out here. So, Sammy, about how close to uh, the village where you all live is the proposed site for these massive canisters of toxic sludge? About four miles. And uh, what protective measures will be uh, surrounding that? A chain link fence. How, how tall will that chain link fence be? Eight feet. The average Al Qaeda guy is probably like 5'8, uh, wouldn't you think? At least. So, there's no way he could get over that. Uh, well, the tribe was told that terrorism doesn't exist in Skull Valley because this facility will have an eight foot fence around it. Will it have keep out signs? I hope so. So that'll probably help too. How effective is Chainlink in uh, stopping massive doses of uh, radiation? None that I'm aware of. Probably just a little right where the wire is. If you say so. Private fuel storage bought him from uh, a guy in Minnesota and said, this is a gift for taking our nuclear waste and, and gave the tribe to Buffalo. What are you complaining about? Well, you know, I'm complaining about it. It's insulting because we think buffalo are sacred animals and shouldn't be used in that way, but... It seems fair to me for, for storing, you know, 40,000 tons of the world's most toxic waste out here, you get two buffalo. Come on. Yeah. You see the fairness in that? I, I do. I do. And uh, uh, I just... Why am I complaining? Excuse me, sir. Sir, we understand that you're an employee of private fuel storage. Do you have any comments? Sir? Sir, do you miss Minnesota? Sir, just a comment, please. If you go further eight miles down the road, that's the Dugway Proving Ground. If you go southeast is where they keep the world's largest 
nerve gas. And it's old and leaking. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Out here would be private fuel storages, uh, the nuclear waste. Just on the other side of those mountains to the west is the Hill Air Force bombing range. Right now, Utah is allowing EnviroCare, the building blocks, to bring hot, hotter waste. How does that, how would the, the waste EnviroCare is wanting to bring uh, compare to the waste that private fuel storage wants to put out here? Well, that's, that's what I'm concerned about is because they want to reclassify hotter waste. It's just a matter of time. If EnviroCare is asking for hotter waste, uh, tomorrow, next year, they'll be asking for even hotter waste. Where does it end? So your ancestors have wandered on this land for thousands and thousands of years and called it their home. What do you think they would have to say about this situation? You know, I think they've already said it. That's why there's no nuclear waste here today. We are caretakers of this land. Our ancestors were caretakers of this land. They took care of this land. It's our turn to take care of this land and uh, for our children and our grandchildren. And then they'll do the same. This isn't our land. We're here to take care of it because it's taken care of us for so many years. So that's our show. Thanks to everybody for coming down to have Thanksgiving dinner with us. It was truly a delight. Thanksgiving kicks ass! Woo! Thank you, Quinn, for all of your lovely music for the evening. And now, uh, for our special uh, uh, viewer segment, it's Jack Wetmore's uh, version of uh, Porter Rockwell, flying around on a seagull. Audiences are invited to submit anything that they think would be creative and, well, pretty much interesting to watch on TV, and you can log on to 3.2%.com and it will give you all the instructions. Goodbye, 3.2%. Happy Thanksgiving! Bye. Happy! Thank you! Send us your videos and pictures, keep them under a minute, and we'll air them. Hello, I'm Porter Rockwell. This episode is available on DVD or VHS. To purchase your own copy, call us at 801-220-0202. Thank you for coming, and we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>